Hello everyone, welcome back to the psychology course. Today we will continue with chapter 2, research methods in psychology. In this chapter, we will firstly talk about basic concepts of scientific research, then significance of research in psychology, research process in psychology, major research paradigms in psychology, and lastly, research ethics in psychology. Okay, let's start with the basic concepts of scientific research. Research methods used in social sciences do not vary much across different scientific fields. This means that different scientific fields such as psychology, sociology, and anthropology do not employ different methods. The difference lies across the fields of interest rather than the methods. There lies a literally interesting relationship between science and philosophy. In general, science is the sum of organized and systematic knowledge. This definition, although totally correct, does not include comprehensive details about science. Philosophy of science, which is epistemology, is a subfield of philosophy. Epistemology is a thinking act about the basic principles of a science or a scientific field. The most striking similarity between science and philosophy is that both generate knowledge. This knowledge aims to help individuals understand themselves, their environment, the world, and even the universe. On the other hand, philosophy is directly concerned with the question, what is knowledge? As for philosophy, knowledge is the relation between the agent and the theme. In this proposition, the agent is a human and all the rest is the theme. Philosophy asks questions and strives to unfold the answers by reasoning but not by way of senses. On the contrary, science pursues its quest to find answers by using senses and the scientific methods. Some of the fundamental characteristics of science are as follows. It is objective. It focuses on the reality in nature. It is systematic and organized. It is cumulative and it is replicable. Let's talk about the significance of research in psychology. In this era, also known as information age, knowledge is produced rapidly in great amounts and it spreads quite quickly, especially through use of media and communication technologies. Undoubtedly, science is not the only way to access knowledge. In our daily lives, we pick up a vast amount of knowledge, either consciously or subconsciously. Considering the properties of scientific knowledge, we will try to answer the question, why is scientific research necessary, without being overwhelmed by the details. Scientific research is necessary for the development of a country. One of the indicators of modernity in the contemporary world includes research and development activities. It is not necessary to develop technology. All technologies easing human life are based on the findings of scientific research studies. It is necessary to be able to provide services. Regardless of the type, any service provided to a community has to be founded by science. It is necessary to overcome conventional judgments. It is necessary to be able to generate true, evidence-based and less risky knowledge. It is necessary to solidify relatively abstract knowledge. We should now talk about research process in psychology. Psychology studies consist of before, during, and after processes. In other words, the studies include planning, conducting, and reporting results in general. While planning a research, it is necessary to specify the following. How long the study will take, the date of each stage within the study, by whom it will be conducted, and which resources will be used. Since psychology research aims to solve a personal or social problem or find an answer to a question, it is indeed a problem-solving process. Psychological research process begins with statement of the topic, ends with reporting the study. Let's clarify these stages briefly. Finding a research subject, identifying the research problem, gathering information about the problem, determining hypotheses or research questions, constructing the research method, conducting a research, analyzing data, and reporting the results. 
there are some major research paradigms in psychology. It can be said that there are two major paradigms in social science studies, qualitative and quantitative paradigms. In recent years, mixed paradigm studies that contain both qualitative and quantitative factors have also been developed as the third paradigm. Philosophically, quantitative research is based on positivism and qualitative research is based on phenomenology. While there are measurement, evaluation, and numbers in quantitative research, the focus is on the process and there are no digital descriptions in qualitative research. Quantity is a notion used to specify the amount or number of something. In other words, the answer to the question how many or how much generally gives the quantity of that thing. Yet, quality involves the answer to how. In this sense, quantitative paradigm is based on numbers and statistical analysis in social sciences. It assumes that all the variables of research can be observed, assessed, and explained numerically. Therefore, quantitative paradigm is also known as empirical or digital paradigm. There is a significant difference between qualitative and quantitative approaches. Earlier utilized mostly by anthropologists and sociologists, qualitative approach is also employed by psychologists today due to the claim that it fits better with the nature of social events. Qualitative approach is a research model aiming to determine perceptions and events as realistically and holistically as possible through use of qualitative data collection techniques such as observation, interview, and document analysis. Our last topic for today is research ethics in psychology. Ethics in psychology refers to philosophy of ethics and values. For other fields of work, ethics determine the common values of a professional group and it includes written and unwritten rules that the members of that profession have to abide. Science ethics, on the other hand, refers to a space of discussion where value problems encountered during scientific activities and relevant solutions are discussed and negotiated. Ethics is the conscience of a researcher. You may conduct the most outstanding research in the world, but if your study involves some ethical violations, your results and conclusions will be of no value. This is no different from lying, fraud, or theft. Ethics is based on respect for human rights. There are specific ethical rules to comply with within psychological research and practice. Researchers can never harm the participants. Researchers have to grant written consent from the participants. Researchers have to comply with the principle of confidentiality. Researchers have to avoid scientific deception. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 2 of the Psychology course. Goodbye and see you in our next program, Chapter 3.